In this session, we are going to look into identifying and debugging threads. So here I have a simple function called perform work, which loops for a thousand times, each time incrementing value of i, and then simply prints out the value of i on the console. Now I am launching this function on two different threads, thread t1 and thread t2. t2. So let's just build it and run it. And you see that both these threads ran and the printed value of i, if you scroll a little bit, the i towards end is almost in the range of 900. And then you will see some values of i in the range of 800. And sometimes they are mixed with values starting with 900. Obviously this is happening because each of those threads are printing each of those values because they are looping separately through through the same for loop. Uh, so each have a different uh, instance of i. So each each thread is looping from i equals 0 to uh, 999 and each one is printing its own value of i. But since uh, it is indeterminate how much time each thread gets uh, each time it executes uh, for the execution and when it gets interrupted and when the control passes to another thread is not predetermined exactly. So uh, that's why you see uh, a thread maybe uh, thread 1 is printing 10 values of i lo looping through for loop 10 times and then thread 2 is getting enough time just to print out 5 values and then again it's going execution is going back to thread 1 which uh, prints few more values and that's why all this output is totally mixed up. Now how can we if we wanted to how could we identify which of these uh, messages or which of these uh, numbers are printed by which thread and that's where the thread identification comes in let's just close this window so there are two attributes of thread that can help us identify uh, a particular thread and one of those is called thread id uh, it's a it's a number automatically assigned by operating system to a thread and the way you can access that number is through uh, a static variable called current thread and it can be accessed through thread class. So let's print out here um, thread id equals thread dot current thread. That's the static variable that has all the thread related information and the information we are interested in right now is uh, managed thread ID. This is the ID assigned by uh, the operating system to the thread randomly. So let's build this and let's run it again. Now you see uh, this I think we need to give a space bit space here for clear readability. So let's give one space here. Let's build it again and let's run it. So if you see there is thread 4 which is printing some values and there is thread 3 which is printing some values and then again you see thread 4 here then again you see thread 3 here. Now let's close this and run it again. So again you see thread 3 and 4 but we don't know which thread is thread 3 and which thread is thread 4. So sometimes it might be necessary to very very clearly identify the thread by something other than other than the random number which is thread id. And we can do that by giving it a name. So let's say thread id equals this and then we'll add a name here. Name equals Plus again, the name is uh, name can be accessed to through the same current thread static variable dot name. If we build this right now and if we run it, we are now not seeing any name. It's blank because we have not not assigned the name uh, to the thread. So let's assign the name t1 dot. So you need to assign the name after you create the thread object so you can assign name here let's say let's call, give it a name t1 and let's just copy it down 
and assign name to T2 as well. Let's build it and let's run it. So now you see the thread T2 has ID of 4 and T1 has ID of 3 and they are each printing the values. So this thread name and thread ID they are very useful when debugging. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's just press F5. So we came and stopped here at the breakpoint. Now the question is which thread it is? Is it did we stop in T1 or did we stop in T2? And that is that is answered by this box here, thread. It gives us the ID and the name which is T1. And you if you see there is another thread T2 here. So if we switch to T2, this is the breakpoint in T2. Currently we have hit breakpoint break the same breakpoint on both the threads and if we press F5 now if you see if you press F5 you will see the thread is T2 again F5 F then you see, see that it got switched to T1 and then it switched back to T2 so sometimes we are breaking at T1 and sometimes we are breaking in thread T2 let's run it multiple times I'm just trying to get to thread T1. And it's not because it's T2, yeah, now it came, came to T1. So it's totally not uh, under our control. And what if, if we just wanted to break in T1, we don't, didn't want to waste all this time uh, stepping through T2 to get to T1 which we are really interested in and the way to do that is you right click on this click on filter right click on the breakpoint click on filter and here you can say thread name equals T1 if you do that this breakpoint will be applied only for T1 so if you if you do a file now you will see that it will never switch this window here ne will never switch to T2 because we are breaking only in T1 not in T2 and this feature is very very useful when you want to do some targeted debugging for a particular thread another point of interest I would like to show you is there is this main thread which is a thread uh, on which the main function launched